Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a very nice weekend. This is Mohamed Yakub, and back again making another STM32 tutorial video. And today's tutorial uh, is a very exceptional one. It's about DAC waveform generation. I just realized that my previous basic uh, digital to analog converter tutorial was only about outputting analog values and it didn't include the waveform part. And uh, an important part of the STM DAC is generating waveforms. Um, the STM DAC has got a built-in waveform generation feature that enables you to generate a triangular waveform just like the one you see on screen and also uh, it also it also allow you to generate noise waveform. So if you have a signal processing or system identification application where, where you require some white noise uh, output, you can use the built-in uh, feature on the STM DAC to do that. Um, and in addition to that, I will also demonstrate to you how to generate your own custom waveform very efficiently using uh, DMA. All right, so that's briefly today's tutorial, generating triangular waveform with a built-in functionality, noise waveform, and then a custom um, waveform using DMA. All right, uh, I think it's very, very important for anybody using uh, STM DAC for uh, signals. So let's get started. I hope you enjoy it. First thing as usual is opening Cubemix and setting up a project. And on, on Cubemix, we select new project, um, select the board. Um, I'm using the STM32 for discovery board, uh, the conventional one. So go to board selector. Uh, it's a discovery board and it's the F4 discovery. Uh, and on here, I'll first clear all the pinouts and I will enable my LEDs on the board. So BD12 to BD15, set them as uh, output. Um, and I also want to enable the push button. Uh, it might come useful. Um, right. Um, in addition to that, I'll enable the external oscillator. Um, I like to have a very stable clock when using DAC and DMAs. Um, and the external clock will allow me just that. Uh, and then we can go ahead and enable our digital to analog converter. So go to DAC and enable channel 1, and that would enable PA4. So you should get your signal on pin PA4. All right, that's it for the pinout. Now let's go to the clock configuration, uh, and I'll set up my clock using the external clock, and I want the frequency to be 84 megahertz, and it will automatically adjust the clock speed. Um, I will set this one to two, so I can clearly see that my clocks are at 84 megahertz. Maybe let me lower them, I just want 42. Um, right, so my timer speed now at 42 uh, megahertz. One more thing that we need to enable on the pinout side as well, I just realized, I just remembered, is the uh, timer. So since we're using DAC and we would like to use DMA with it, uh, it, we need to use a trigger timer to trigger the DMA um, speed, okay? Um, and for that, we need to use timer six. That's the DAC timer. So just activate timer six, and then go to the configuration window. Uh, and on here, first thing, we will configure the DAC. Uh, and on parameter settings, need to enable trigger timer six trigger output event, and that's it. Uh, and I will enable the DAC DMA as well. So add in the DAC one, and I want I want it to be just byte in width. You can use half half word if you are using the full DAC resolution, which is 12 bit. Uh, but I prefer to use byte resolution um, for a quick demo. Okay, and the mode to circular, of course, because I want to output the signal continuously and repeatedly. Okay, uh, that seems to be everything. So click OK, and now we also need to set our DAC timer. So on timer six, I will set the prescaler to whatever timer clock frequency is, and it's 42 megahertz for APP1. So I'll set prescaler of 42 minus one. It's necessary to add the minus one because um, zero correspond to dividing by one and one correspond to dividing by two and so on. So 42 minus one is dividing by 42. Um, and that will result into a one megahertz um, trigger. 
but I don't want that. I want 100 kilohertz, so I'll put a 10 minus 1, of course, to divide by 10. And set the trigger event selection to update event. So this would um, reset the timer whenever um, the period is elapsed. Um, so this will result into a continuous trigger to the DAC and hence to the DAC DMA that we will use later. OK, so that's it. Click OK. And I think we have everything here. Um, so we are ready to generate our um, source code. Click on generate source code icon. Um, select a location to store the project chain. I'll store it in here. And I'll call it DAC waveform um, tutorial maybe. Um, select the right IDE. I'm using MDK RMV5 and click OK. Uh, and while the source code is generating for any of my business contacts, you can get in touch with me through mutexembeddedsolution.com. Okay, code is ready. So click on open project and this will take you to your selected IDE. Okay, uh, and first thing that I would like to do here is that I'd like to compile the project just to make sure all the libraries are compiled and linked. Uh, so click on compile. And the first mode that we will demonstrate is generating a triangular waveform. And to use a triangular waveform, you have the option to generate a triangular waveform starting from zero, or you can have a DC shift to it as well. Um, so to do that, we need to go to functions tab and under DAC driver, you should sorry it's under the DAC extended driver rather um, there is a function called triangular waveform generate so double click on this and it will take you there um, so what this function does is that this start generating a triangular waveform uh, on DAC um, so this one takes the DAC handle and the channel and the amplitude and you'd notice that the uh, triangular waveform amplitude is out of 4095 is the maximum so that's 12 bit of resolution. So this is always out of 12 bit resolution. Um, so if you want to span the, span the maximum DAC range of 0 to 3 volt, you want to you select this amplitude. If you want to use half of it, then this 2047. Um, we'll demonstrate that in a bit. So let me first copy the function into my main um, to, use, to use the DAC to generate a triangular waveform. Uh, and this should go on bigger number two. So I'll call it generate triangular waveform. And I could just finish compiling without any errors. Pretty good. Um, but that's not the first step. The first step we need to do is to enable timer six. Enable timer six uh, because that's the one that's going to trigger the, the digital to analog converter. Um, and to do that, it's um, hull tim base start function. And this will start the timer. And it takes the timer handle, which is um, htim6 for timer 6. And I pointed to that, so we need to use the ampersand sign. And that will start tim6. And then the second step is to generate the triangular waveform. And for that, we will use our function. All right, and the first parameter is the DAC handle, which is HDAC given by Cubamix in here. And the second parameter is the DAC channel, which is basically just channel one because using PA4. And the third parameter is the amplitude. And for the amplitude, I want to output 1.5 volt, just half of the output range because I also want to add a DC shift. So I'll copy this, um, and that's why I want to output. And that's it. So this should output triangular waveform. Um, and then I also need to um, start um, the DAC operation. And for that, how DAC start. And this just takes the uh, DAC handle and the channel number, which is DAC channel one. And that's it, I believe. Let me just verify. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so this one should generate a triangular waveform without a DC shift. So it should start from zero and output this 
a triangular wave starting from zero. So let's test that. Uh, let me compile the code, um, load it to my board, and we're going to have a look together on the oscilloscope um, reading pin PA4, because that's the pin that outputs the deck signal, and we should get a triangular waveform. Okay, uh, compile without errors. Now let's load it to the board. And let's have a look at the oscilloscope. And sure enough, uh, you saw the signal on the oscilloscope. Uh, the peak to peak is 1.5 volt as we expected, and, and it starts from zero. And the frequency, you may have noticed that the frequency of the signal is about 24.5 hertz. And the reason for that is, let's get the calculator out. Uh, the reason for that is um, we've got a triggering timer of 100, 100 kilohertz. That's because of the choice of timer six, prescalar and period. So 42 and 10 would result into um, 100 kilohertz um, trigger frequency. And then um, the way the triangular waveform generator works is that it has got a increment and decrement counter. And this is a counter on the clock. So because I want my amplitude to be 2047, um, so it's going to be a rising 2047 and then a falling one. Um, so that would be two of them. So I need to divide it by uh, 2047 um, and also divide it by two because one for the rising or the falling. And sure enough, this is nearly 24.4 hertz. And that's what we see on the oscilloscope as well. So what you've noticed is that if you lower the amplitude, you will get higher frequency. But that's just the basic triangular waveform generator. It might not be very, very useful for some applications. So the best way might be just to use DMA and generate your own triangular waveform with certain sampling rate. Uh, but that's the one for triangular waveform. Um, now let me show you how to generate a noise signal, uh, but before that, let me add a DC or offset to it. Um, so add a DC offset, and you have to be slightly careful with this. Um, you can't have the signal to span the entire range and then have an offset, because that will not accept an offset and it will miss the signal up. So I have to make sure that my offset is no more than 2047. Um, so and to add an offset, you simply just uh, set the DAC value. So set value, I think it takes similar parameters. The third parameter is the alignment, which is, let me go to the uh, function definition to get that. Um, it's 12 aligned to the right, because this one is 12 bit resolution, and I'm just gonna output 1000 perhaps. So this will shift it up by, um, about one volt. Um, so let's look again at the oscilloscope and see the DC shift. Perfect, you just saw that on the, on the oscilloscope. We have the same signal, but now with a DC uh, offset. Um, all right, and now let me show you how to generate the noise waveform with a built-in waveform noise generator. Um, similarly, go to under functions, go to DAC extended driver, and we need, now we need to open the noise waveform generate function. So it's a very, very similar in structure to the uh, triangular wave, but this one would generate a noise waveform. So I'm just going to put it in here with the same parameters and also half of the amplitude. Um, and let's compile, load it to the board, and we'll have a look at the oscilloscope. And now what we should find is that we should have a um, noise signal instead of the triangular wave. Exactly. As you saw on the oscilloscope, now we have a white noise signal um, and the DAC output. All right, so that's for using the built-in functions. Now, let me show you how to generate your own custom signal um, using DMA. So what I'll do is that I'm going to comment out, um, I'm going to comment out all of these functions because I think I don't need them. And what I'll do, what I need is that I need, I first need to, um, define a buffer for my DAC value. So I'll set it to a constant variable of an unsigned 8-bit because I set my DMA to a byte. Um, and I'll call it my DAC 
signal um, and let's say perhaps eight data points um, and I'll generate a staircase signal maybe so starting with 50 um, sorry 0 uh, 40 80 120 160 um, then 200 and then 240 so this is um, how many data points we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven data points. Okay. And I want to output those via DMA. Um, and to output those via DMA, uh, you simply need to call um, HALDAC start with DMA. Uh, and that should be on the normal DAC uh, driver as a function called start DMA. So this function takes few parameters, take the DAC, the channel, the data source, and the length, and the alignment. So um, let me copy this to my main. Um, this is output DAC signal with DMA. Okay, so the first parameter, first two parameters are similar to the set value. And then the third parameter is the pointer to the DMA um, to the DMA variable, which is this one. So I just need to pass this in here. And does it expect a certain stuff? So expect an unsigned 32 pointer. Um, but I'll leave it as it is. I think it's not going to show an error. And the third, the next parameter is the length. So those are only seven data points that DMA need to circle around and continuously output the signal point by point. And the alignment is um, eight bit. Okay, um, so if you use different resolution, okay, so this one doesn't like this one because I need to um, change uh, type caster variable. So yeah, so that should be okay now. Uh, well, alternatively, what I could do um, to avoid any problem with that, I can define my variable as an unsigned 32, but then have the values as a byte. That's a much safer option because this function expects an unsigned 32 pointer. Okay. So, yeah, let me typecast it anyway. And the reason why I do the typecast is because the function expects an unsigned 32 pointer, and I'm given it an unsigned 32 pointer by doing this, but because this one is a constant, I believe. That's why it doesn't like it, but no, it's fine. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, this one should be our... Um, our array, our signal array should be unsigned 8-bit, uh, and then this is just a pointer to the start of the array. Uh, we already told it the align, so it will read 8-bit from the start of this pointer. So that's correct. So you need to keep this as unsigned 8, and this one is just typecasting so that the function accepts the pointer. Uh, but this one will do the rest of incrementing 8 bits each time um, to get the next element. So let's compile it, load it to the board, and have a look again at the scoop, and now we should get the uh, correct signal. All right, fantastic. As you saw on the scope, we have a perfect staircase signal, just like what we have in here. Um, and the frequency of the signal as it appeared in the oscilloscope was 14 point something kilohertz. Um, and the reason for that is because we have a 10, uh, we have a 100 kilohertz sampling uh, frequency and we are outputting seven data points. So when you divide this by seven, you get 14.28 um, kilohertz. And that's what we saw on the scope as well. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to show you at this video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And for any of my business contacts, you can always get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.